We'd like to give a special thanks to all those Americans who built those spacecraft, who did the construction, design, the test, and put their heart and all their abilities in, into those crafts. To those people, tonight we give a special thank you. And to all the other people that are listening and watching tonight, God bless you. Good night. This from Apollo 11. is Maximus Aviation. Well, recently, on May 1st, the NASA Office of the Inspector General, or the OIG, released a report of an extensive review of problems with the Orion spacecraft, ground equipment, and the deep space network that occurred during the uncrewed Artemis I mission launched in November of 2022. And that investigation has uncovered some terrifying flaws in the Artemis project, especially with the crew vehicle Orion. And as you will see, the OIG discovered that the way this present vehicle, Orion, is configured, the astronauts probably would not have survived their first re-entry back to Earth. But hey, that's why they test them first without humans anyway, right? So let's go over the OIG's report on Artemis 1, and we'll talk about it and see what they discovered. NASA says it identified more than 100 locations on the re-entry heat shield that have been burnt away unexpectedly during its 25,000 mile per hour re-entry into Earth's atmosphere as it had to endure temperatures of over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit or about half the temperature of the surface of the sun. While the heat shield successfully protected the crew module and its systems during the Artemis 1 mission, after inspection of the recovered capsule, engineers were surprised to find unexpected variations in the appearance of the heat shield called Avcoat, the ablative material that helps protect the capsule from the heat of re-entry. This scary discovery led NASA to halt any further human flight testing until they figure out what's going on. The report notes that the unexpected behavior of the heat shield poses a significant risk to the safety of future crews. In response, NASA formed what they call a Tiger Team to investigate the char loss phenomenon, especially the portions of the char layer that wore away differently than NASA engineers predicted, including the cracking and breaking off of the spacecraft and fragments that created a trail of debris rather than melting away as was the original design. The unexpected behavior of the Avco creates a risk that the heat shield may not sufficiently protect Orion's systems and crew from the extreme heat of re-entry on future missions. Moreover, there was no evidence of impact with the crew module. The quantity and size of the debris could have caused enough structural damage to cause one of Orion's parachutes to fail, which may have indeed happened, but NASA was unable to recover the parachutes after splashdown. The report says if the same issue were to happen on future missions, it could lead to the loss of the vehicle and its crew. Engineers are conducting ground tests to understand the AVCO material's thermal response. Although they weren't able to recreate the char loss, they could not reproduce the exact material response of flight environment experienced during Artemis 1. Ultimately, ground testing cannot replicate the exact temperatures and speed conditions the heat shield faces during reentry. In comparison, Orion's velocity is about 40% faster than what astronauts face in a SpaceX or Crew Dragon on its return from the International Space Station, due to the greater distance Orion must travel to return to Earth. The ongoing investigation is scheduled to conclude in the first half of 2024 following further ground testing. The inspection also found that the crew module service module separation bolts revealed unexpected melting and erosion that created a gap leading to increased heating inside the bolts during Orion's re-entry. The crew module houses four separation bolts located at specific increments on the capsule to provide structural support for the attachment of the crew module to the service module. Upon re-entry to Earth's atmosphere, the bolts receive a separation command releasing the crew module from the service module. The service module burns up in Earth's atmosphere while the crew module continues its descent and landing under the protection of the heat shield. The separation bolts are surrounded by blocks of thermal protective avcoat and sealed with thermal filler while the surface is exposed to the extreme heat of re-entry. NASA requires the bolts to remain flush with the thermal protective material after the service module separation to guard against excessive heating. However, during Artemis 1, three out of four of the bolts experienced an exposed gap that allowed for increased heating to the bolt interior and greater than expected melting and erosion. 
Separation bolt melt beyond the thermal barrier during re-entry can expose the vehicle to hot gas ingestion behind the heat shield, exceeding Orion's structural limits, and resulting in the breakup of the vehicle and loss of the crew. Post-flight inspections determined there was a discrepancy in the thermal model used to predict the bolt's performance pre-flight. Current predictions using the correct information suggest the bolt melt exceeds the design capability of Orion. While NASA plans to redesign the separation bolt for later Artemis missions to mitigate this issue for Artemis II, NASA made minor modifications to the separation bolt design and added additional thermal protective barrier material to the bolt gaps. NASA also is exploring changing the Artemis II mission reentry trajectory to limit friction and heating on the bolts. Then in August of 2023, they uncovered a hardware design deficiency with the circuitry used to command critical components of the atmosphere revitalization system, which removes carbon dioxide and trace contaminants from the cabin atmosphere and monitors the composition of the air. Of particular significance, these faulty circuits drive the valves for the removal of carbon dioxide from the crew cabin. And if you saw Apollo 13, you know how bad that can be. This condition is unsafe for human spaceflight because high levels of CO2 can deplete breathable oxygen. As a result, NASA is working to make modifications to the circuitry hardware in difficult to access locations inside the assembled Orion spacecraft and perform additional tests to ensure operability. Also during testing of the crew module battery system, NASA identified electrical system defects that could hamper the four batteries ability to fully power the spacecraft to landing in the event of an abort, again increasing the risk of losing a crew. The investigation into the issue is in the early stages and NASA has not yet developed a plan forward. The report also discovered uncommanded power disruptions throughout the Artemis 1 mission. NASA recorded 24 instances of power conditioning and distribution unit, the PCDU, basically performing tasks uncommanded, kind of like HAL from 2001 A Space Odyssey. The report also found greater than expected launch damage that needs to be repaired. While NASA anticipated that some materials and equipment would be sacrificial to the launch and require replacement, the launch pads, elevators, electrical equipment, enclosure panel doors, and pneumatic tubing sustained significant and unexpected damage. The extensive repairs to address this damage will cost more than $26 million, roughly five times more than the $5 million estimate originally set aside for post-Artemis launch repairs. The launch pad's elevator doors were blown off during the Artemis 1 launch, allowing the interior structure to be heavily damaged. Specifically, the elevator car tracks were bent and the counterweight was dislodged from the track. It took NASA six weeks to bring one elevator back online and roughly four months to finish repairing the second elevator. According to one NASA official, he said going into the Artemis 1 mission, it wasn't known that the elevator blast doors were not in fact blast doors, but rather fiberglass doors. And immediately after that, he said, what do you think I am, some kind of rocket scientist? Call me naive, but shouldn't making sure the doors are blast proof kind of be high on the checklist? Anyway, a total of 60 enclosures that house electrical components sustained damage during the Artemis 1 launch. And NASA also stated that the pad's washdown systems were destroyed. NASA states the obvious here saying that while all these pad components are being blown away, that increases the risk of a debris strike damaging the launch vehicle itself. Oh, and this was breaking news from the report. Did you know that key hardware was not recovered after Artemis 1 splashdown landing recovery? While NASA had the plans, people, procedures, and hardware in place, the recovery team was not able to arrive at the splashdown location before the jettison hardware sank in the Pacific Ocean. Although pre-flight analysis indicated a possibility of enough buoyancy to allow for the recovery forces to arrive in time, the hardware sank faster than projected. I wonder if the fiberglass blast door guy made those calculations too. Anyway, all that stuff is on the ocean floor. Oh, and you know what else is on the ocean floor? The parachutes. NASA could not examine the condition of Orion's three main parachutes because they sank to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean before the recovery team could reach them. And it also says they lost the forward bay cover which allows for the deployment of the parachutes, so yeah, they got royally screwed all the way around on the parachutes. 
But I just briefly touched on a few of the problems that they found from the Artemis 1 investigation. But if you want to read the full report for yourself, I'll post a link to the PDF down below. Now while all of that may sound like bad news to some, it is actually good news for the program and astronauts alike. At least unlike with the shuttle, they are fixing the problems before they strap on the astronauts. So let's hope the gang at NASA gets this rocket fixed up and ready to fly sometime in the next few years. But in the meantime, I'll stay busy with aviation news here on the ground. Well, that's all I have for now. So head on down to the comment section and let me know down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, as always, yeah, this is Maximus.